This is a bit of an out there video. I wanted to discuss chaos theory, which goes something like this. When a butterfly flaps its wings in one part of the world, it can cause a hurricane in another part of the world. Uh, I don't know if you've heard about this one before, but the theory is that the small, uh, small kind of flapping from the butterfly wings, I guess the butterfly's got a little face and little feelers and stuff, but the small amount of uh, air um, movement can then cause a larger amount of air movement and uh, I'll, I'll draw a bit of a tornado more than a um, more than a hurricane but so uh, <laughs> so this can lead to this and we just want to explore some of the ideas behind that and whether it's true and, and uh, uh, yeah just for fun just to get your mind working in a slightly different way so um, one of the main things I want to mention is uh, is energy. Physics is all about energy, and we sort of well, we we not sort of anything. We do like to talk about uh, conservation of energy. This may seem a little bit misleading, but uh, at first, but I just want to consider: uh, does energy or is energy conserved in this concept of, of chaos theory? Okay, so does energy conservation hold true? And uh, <laughs> first of all, we have to assume, can, can this actually happen? I don't know. I don't know if it can happen on the scale that it seems to, but we're assuming it can happen. If it can happen, then if physics is true, that energy is always conserved, then, then yes. Physics has to be uh, true, um, otherwise you're dealing in the realms of miracles and unusual things, metaphysics. But uh, yes, energy is conserved. Um, we would like to explore anyway how energy is conserved in this in this process. This is going to be a little bit rambling. I'm sort of making it up as I go along. I do have a few little notes on the side. Um, so yes, energy has to be conserved. Um, so how would that work in this situation? A small, small air movement giving rise to a large air movement. How? That's what we're after. So uh, it, it's a little bit hard to conceive of this, but if you imagine the air particles around the um, butterfly wings. It's a pretty awful looking butterfly. It looks sort of like an apple with a slice cut out. I don't know. Um, anyway, the, the air particles that are around this could potentially be shifted uh, from one direction to another, or in one position to another, or given um, momentum, transfer momentum from the wings of the um, butterfly into the air particles. Now obviously there's not enough energy um, on this side, if this is E1 and this is E2, that they're not, they're not equal, and E2 has clearly got a much larger amount of energy to move the air than you have with um, the air movement here, but there's a sort of an unknown in the middle of this process that acts, uh, that takes this air movement from the small amount and acts a little bit like a, um, a, a catalyst sort of uh, a thing which makes other things happen. Um, yeah, let's write that. A thing which makes other things happen. So, um, what's a good example? A good example might be um, a, a transistor. Um, a transistor is um, let's see, it's an electronic component, this is just one type of transistor, and um, that's the electronic symbol for it. This part here, the B, is the base, and you have the collector and the emitter, and as an electronic uh, component, um, it allows electricity to flow um, in one direction, only if you have a small current 
coming through from the base. So um, it's like a switch. Essentially, you have a small current coming out the base, and it switches it on. And that current only travels if there's uh, a 0 0.7 volts between the base and the emitter, or higher, depending on the transistor, of course. But um, so you can see that the small the small current is used to switch the large current. And if we go back over over here, if we think of the small uh, air movement as sort of our, our base or our switch which affects a whole bunch of other stuff and sets into motion um, sort of like dominoes but you're not gaining energy from anywhere it's more like it's just making a conducting path so that then the uh, large air movement can can build up momentum in the same direction and, um, and produce this giant storm or hurricane, or tornado, or whatever we're looking at. So that's one example. You, you often talk about um, catalysts in terms of chemistry, though, where um, you might have two chemicals together that don't react, so nothing happens. But as soon as you throw in um, a third chemical, that can somehow make the whole thing just explode. And it, it, uh, one way to look at it is it orients the particles uh, of the two things two different substances, so that now they can interact, whereas previously they wouldn't. Um, yeah, There's a little bit of a weird concept, because the mechanism is so unclear. We still have this huge question mark between the butterfly flapping its wings, moving a little bit of air, and creating this giant whirlwind. Um, I don't know if anybody has studied it, but generally speaking, I'm doing what a lot of scientists do, and that's ignoring the obvious, that this is actually... Um, a, a sort of a, a literary device or, um, or or a metaphor or something along those lines um, and in the sense that it's often an effect used to describe um, you know far-reaching effects that just couldn't possibly be seen um, from such small occurrences and it's usually um, not dealt with in terms of physical air movement but um, personal interactions. So, um, events. Um, personal interactions and events. So you don't know uh, when you um, meet one person and you take a moment to stop and talk with them and they talk with you and you, you know you could become great friends great friends you could collaborate on a on a huge project that changes the entire world that's my vague drawing of a world but i don't have the detail on ipad to be able to draw it well and if you contrast that with never meeting and never talking and just going along on your merry way in different directions you don't become great friends, make great projects together, change the world. So, uh, very simplistic there. You might do other things, of course, um, on, on a similar scale, but those things there no longer occur. Um, so it's this whole idea of very, very far-reaching effects. And where, um, where it's uh, shown the most uh, in popular culture is actually in um, movies. Is uh, time travel. The whole idea of going back in time and changing something and seeing what changed in the future. Past to future. So this timeline is somehow something goes back and this is cut off and you go to a new future. We might call it future two. And um, that second future, you know, something totally different. However, this results in all sorts of interesting paradoxes um, to do with time travel and alternate universes and, and all sorts of interesting things. But if you do want to check out, I'm going to finish up with this, if you do want to check out um, a couple of movies that involve time travel, there is, funnily enough, the one named The Butterfly Effect. Where um, you can, uh, the, the star of the, the program goes back in time into his uh, younger person's body 
and uh, is conscious of what's going on and he can change things and um, yeah it's very interesting um, and another one which is sort of time travel is uh, so it's a good movie kind of weird you have to have a bit of patience with it I think um, but alternative but Donnie Darko and I'm going to give the plot away just a little bit right at the end he time travels back and uh, prevents um, the death of someone he cares for um, but at the expense of not being able to get to know this person um, so he had to make a decision to either um, get to know the person um, and and have experiences with them and go on with his life after this person died or he could go back in time and uh, die and not have those experiences although he did have those experiences because he went through the whole alternate timeline that's never going to happen now and so he died and this person that he met continued to live safe and yeah one would presume anyway very interesting a lot of cool things to think about chaos theory um, you can search for chaos theory or the butterfly effect for wikipedia and check out those couple of movies they'll be a lot of fun to watch um, yeah and have some conversations about this in the forum if you like this is the kind of cool weird fun stuff that physics uh, gets into um, and if you could propose a mechanism um, between the butterfly and the uh, hurricane to actually get into a bit more detail um, be welcome to uh, I'd welcome your input there as well. Thank you. See, the physics lounge is not all about uh, passing tests. It's about uh, preparing you for life with really crazy and interesting um, scenarios. See you later.